there are a whole lot of things that could be erasing profits from your business. But in, in the years that I've been doing this, the biggest thing that I found that kills people, just erases money out of your account, is, is the issues you have with estimating, right? And there are different aspects to that. So we're gonna go over a few of those today. Not in any particular order, because estimating seems to be the biggest problem. So while I'm going through this, I'm also gonna give you examples because I've done all the mistakes that you could possibly make, I've made them. Luckily, I haven't done any of them so large that I couldn't come back from it, but I have made a lot of mistakes. So I'm gonna share some of those with you today as examples and how we're gonna, you know, how we're gonna start doing things a little better. By the way, Daryl, also known as Finisher, let's go. The first habit I had to break was, I don't know, I, I guess you could call it trying to count other people's money, or maybe you look at it like you're thinking about what you would pay for and the things that you, you know, what, what seems unaffordable or like too high for you to pay. And you base that on what other people are willing to pay for a job. You, and you just can't do it. You can't do it. Essentially, you're negotiating against the ghost. <laughs> or you know they start that you know they always call it a straw man like you're you're creating there's you could be the only one bidding for the job but you're creating a, a fake person out there that you're bidding against a, a straw man that doesn't exist but in your mind you're like man if i you know i gotta lower this price so i can you know or you're looking at like i wouldn't pay that like man that's a, that's a lot of money for this job and the thing is is that when it comes down to it you're not that you're not your customer you're not your customer. So what you can't do is sabotage your own business by throwing numbers out that you'll feel comfortable with because, you know, it's maybe something you would do, but you might be a cheapskate and, and you're, you're out here pricing based off of that. But I wasn't a cheapskate, right? I was just somebody who didn't have much money. So, you know, I always try to do jobs myself. It was a stretch for me to get a, a contractor or a handyman or, or somebody to do some work. But when I did, it was strategic because I was like, you know, it was really something I felt like I couldn't do. So I was like, I'm gonna get this guy to do it. And you know, the numbers had to be right. It wasn't like, you know, for me, the idea of getting somebody to come in and paint my house. And there's a lot of people out there like that. A lot of people out there like that, that are like, the amount of money it costs to have somebody come in and paint your house versus just doing it yourself is astronomical. But, but, you're gonna trade in quality, right? There, there are a lot of things that come with the, with the if, if somebody is a true professional, there's a whole lot of things that come with that, that you're not, you might not be taking into account when you're pricing. So you cannot base that off of how you feel. I used to look at this with furniture assembly, right? When I was first starting out, I used to do a lot of furniture assembly. But for some reason in my mind, because I wouldn't pay anybody to do it, that, so I, I cheapened it. I cheapened it so much where I was like, you know, I'm putting together stuff, you know, you don't want to charge money, like somebody buy 50 bucks. And in and, and reality, you can't, you just can't do that if you're running a legitimate business. If you, if you earn them up the street, I mean, you can, you can, you can swing $50, but you know, you, you license and insured and all that, that has to come with a price, right? So $50 is something you can't do, but I did it. And I actually had a customer tell me that I put together some massive desk for her and you know, she was one of the homies, right? She was, Matter of fact, my family even knows these customers and that's, we, we just called them the homies, right? <laughs> and yeah, they, she told me, I put together this massive desk with like, it, it was like a, a huge desk and it took hours to put this thing together, but I was still thinking it's assembly. And you know, I just didn't charge much. And she looked at how much I was charging and said, nah, nah. And by then I had done a lot of work for her and she was like, nah, you can't, you gotta charge more than this, right? So I, I think I ended up charging like, I don't know, it was like 350 or $400 and it was furniture assembly. And for me, it was like, ugh, like man, would I ever charge, pay somebody $400 to put the, a desk together? No, I wouldn't. But there are a lot of people out there who it's just, it's just so much more convenient for them to have you come over and do it than for them to do it themselves. They just don't want to do it. And they got the money. I mean, $400 for her was like, you know, this pocket change. I had, another, I had another customer, and this is where I saw where it was actually really lucrative. Where this dude, it was like a, I don't know, the house, it was like a millions of dollars for this house, like a huge house, right? How, how on earth would I, would I go into that situation 
thinking about how much I'm willing to pay or trying to count this dude's pockets or, uh, you know, still trying to be like, uh, I don't know. I, why, by then I didn't go in with that. So I understood that it was a whole house full of furniture and, and it was like this, it came all in, it was all in boxes and they needed it done in a weekend because they were having a party or something like that. And I actually took one of my daughters with me. We got it done. But, you know, when somebody's like, look, you can use the elevator in, in the house to, you know, take the furniture uh, upstairs or whatever to put it to take the boxes upstairs from the garage. Don't don't worry about how much money they got. They they I just always keep in mind that it's the service you're providing is what you're charging for. It doesn't matter. All that other stuff doesn't matter. Your feelings, their feelings, and they, this, it ain't about who nobody's feelings. <laughs> nobody's feelings. We ain't charging nothing based off feeling. It's about the reality of the service you're providing. The professionalism, the fact that you're able to, even if it's like this, something like furniture assembly, you're able to go in there, you know how this stuff goes together because you've done it a lot. Even if I put you know together stuff without directions and all that, it's just because you, you're just so used to being able to look at it and say, okay, I know this part, how these things work and how they go together. They don't want to spend hours on that. Like the, the people I'm dealing with, they didn't want to, they didn't want to spend their, their, their weekend and they wouldn't have got it done in a weekend, first off. But they didn't want to spend, they had other things to do and it just, it was part of their plan already. So don't discount yourself right from the start because that's your profits going out the window before you're, you're evaporating profits before you even start. Your second thing that's erasing your profits. You have to be thorough with your estimating. Now, this pertains to people like me, like look, when I give somebody an estimate and it even says on my estimate, you know, if, you know, if there's unforeseen things, like, you know, I'm opening up a wall that I can't guarantee this price. And me and the customer, we, we have that talk maybe over and over and over. It's, it's very well understood that I don't have x-ray vision. I'm not one of the Avengers or one of the X-Men or nothing like that. I, I have no idea what's going on, so I can't give you a price. I can give you a price, maybe a diagnosis, which includes like, you know, tearing a wall open and then seeing what's going on and finding a problem. That's one price. But once we find that, then we can plan the rest of the project. But you have to be thorough about those things. They always say it's up to the person that's delivering the message to get their message across, not for the person receiving it to make sure they receive it right. So if it's you, you're the, you're the business owner, you're the one giving somebody an estimate, giving somebody a price, then you, it's up to you to communicate to that customer that everything that's going on, you can try to be vague if you want. I just, I'm not a believer in, I'm really thorough with these estimates and I've, I've been burned on them before. And because I'm also, I'm not the guy that gives somebody a price and goes back later saying, oh, uh, well, you know what? I forgot about this, this, and this. So it's gonna cost another $500. To me, that's absurd. All right, that's, that's crazy that people will do stuff like that. And one reason is, if, if I'm a customer, right, I accept the estimate, I know there's nothing crazy going on, it's a standard job or whatever, I budgeted, I might have budgeted, you told me this job was $450, I might have budgeted $500 for it. I might not have an extra $500 to give you just because you forgot something. That's just not how this whole thing works. That's not how it, it works. So I might not have that. So it's up to you to give me the uh, the actual numbers or give me everything I need to know. And, and, and sometimes the customers, are, customers will burn you too. I got, I've got, got, here's, here's an example. I was gonna do crown molding. It was a crown molding job and I was painting the wall and I was painting the crown too, whatever. But on the estimate, and I knew, I know I was rushing that estimate. I was like, paint room, right? Paint crown, paint, trim and paint room or whatever. You know, when I showed up, it said paint room on the estimate. <laughs> we didn't never talk about me painting the whole room, but I, on the estimate, I put paint room. I meant paint walls, but when I got there, they had ceiling paint ready for me. They had the wall paint, they had trim paint, they, they had everything. And I, you know, I, I, I even, I looked around, I just, they didn't even say anything. I walked into the room and it was all the paint was laid out. And I looked and I was like, okay, hold on. Pulled my phone up, looked at the estimate. I was like, what are you gonna do? Should I go back? I know I did. I know we didn't talk about me doing everything else, but maybe we didn't talk about it, but I, that's what I put down that I was gonna paint the whole room. So 
where was my argument? They had paid me the deposit. We agree, they, they agreed that I was gonna paint the room. I agreed to it. I showed up today. So I sucked it up and painted everything because that was what I had to do. But I learned you have to be thorough, right? I put on my estimates what I'm not gonna do. I've had people where I was just doing drywall repair and that's, that's all I thought I was doing. <laughs> but then, you know, they end up being like, oh, so, you know, I finished drywall repair. Oh, you're not, oh, that's it? You're just, you're just gonna leave it like that? I was like, yeah, I just repaired the drywall. They would be like, oh, okay. I, didn't, I just didn't think it was repaired. If it wasn't painted, it's not done. It's not fully repaired. And I'm like, really? Really? You really thought I was gonna paint that? So what I did after that, I would start every drywall repair job I do, I put painting not included. And I put it as a little asterisk underneath. This is the whole list of everything I'm doing. Here's underneath, it says the asterisk, it says painting not included. Uh, this not included. So anything that's tied to that job that I'm not gonna be doing that somebody might even have a thought they could throw in there and like, you know, Maybe he won't notice or whatever. Nah, 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 nope, not me. I ain't the one. Fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. So it's gonna be done to exactly how we talked about it, but it's gonna be specified in that estimate. Every little detail. And I think that helps both of y'all, man. So. You know what you're doing, like to the down to the, the detail, the minute detail, and their expectation level is set. So you don't end up off on the hook for work that, you know, the customer might think is part of the job because you didn't do a good job communicating. And then that's how you start erasing more of your profits. Now these last two, they're the last two, right? They could they could go in order. And, and either either one could be number one. It just depends on who you are, you know what I mean? How how thorough you are with your numbers as far as keeping track of, this one's materials, okay? That's what, that's what I'm gonna go to first, materials, because if you don't watch how much materials you're actually gonna need, and you have to be really thorough and understand the, the amount of materials you actually need to do this job, man, it will put you in a hole quick, right? So something like, um, you know, I've had, I had a tile job. So I had jobs where, you know, I thought I needed a, ah, a couple bags, maybe three bags of thin set, of a regular thin set to where, because of where the job was located and how I had to get it done. Well, now I need, I need the rapid set thin set, which costs more. And I need more of it because I'm using Sluter. So, you know, I, I have, you know, I got to fill out a man. It ends up being, it ends up being a hundred or more dollars worth of thin set, just thin set that I didn't account for in that job. So even though, you know, I might have I might have charged them for X amount of materials and you know, even through, you know, you might throw in a couple extra dollars just for incidentals. You know, stuff you don't think of right at the moment. You things you're gonna, you know you're gonna need, just not thinking of right at the moment. You might throw a couple of extra dollars in for that, but you're not thinking it's gonna be an extra 100 and 200 and 300 dollars for certain things. So materials are critical. It's critical to understand that. I mean, if you have to rent a machine or if you have to do all that, like that all has to be built into the price. If it makes it over, I've had, you know, I had jobs where I know people are not gonna take this job because for this, I'm gonna have to rent some kind of giant ladder because I don't have it. Or I'm gonna have to rent some kind of scaffolding and all this stuff because I don't, I don't have it. And so my price is gonna be higher than the, maybe higher than the guy who already has all the material. It just is what it is. Like you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some, but that's fine. But never go into jobs. You know how many, you know how many jobs I've taken over for contractors because they walked off the job. And I know they walked off the job because they didn't price it properly. I mean, great customers, customers that I've been working with for years now. People that are thorough, they just, they know what they want. They'll spend the money. They don't really care about none of that. But, um, uh, but you can't tell them that this is the price of the job. And then all of a sudden you gotta keep asking them for more money. I need more money, I need more money. It's just like, no, no. If you underestimate how much you need, that's a you problem. <laughs> it's just, it just is what it is. You know what I mean? That's a you problem. That doesn't need to fall back on the customer. You have to be able, it's part of, it's part of a, being a professional. This is what you do every day, right? So, you know, 
It's not my job as a customer. I don't know how much you need. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's your job to know that. What I started doing a while back was I would have a job, right? I'd write down, say for a tile, I'd write down everything I needed for tile and have it in a little, not, not even a spreadsheet. It'd just be like saved in a, in a little document and would just say, you know, tile jobs or whatever. And these are all the things I would need on tile jobs. Now I'd have to look, do I, do I have it or do I need it? Uh, like, you know, let me go check my tile saw blade and see if I need another one. Let me check the, you know, you could be drilling through porcelain or something like that. Them little drill bits, man, them things, are, a little drill bit, it costs you $40, $50. You trying to drill through porcelain, that drill bit might last you one job. You have to take that into account. So be thorough with your materials cost or else it's gonna cost you in the long run. You see what I did there? <laughs> that, that will erase your profits, for real. Last but not least, time, 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 time. How long is it gonna take you to complete the job? Do you know for real? Do you know for real? Are you gonna give yourself some cushion? Do you know this job is supposed to take two days and it's gonna take two days to do it, not four? Not five, not six, not seven. You think it's gonna take you two days? Are you sure about that? That's the thing that, you know, that hurts so many contractors. There are jobs we've all done multiple, multiple times. So there might be certain things that we have down to a science that we know for the most part, how long it's gonna take. If you don't have a long track record on some of these jobs, you're just not gonna know from the beginning. And, and what I would say is to give yourself extra time. And so that, what, what that looks like is when you're talking to the customer and talking the job out, Okay, this job, it I don't know, it might be four to five days or whatever, even if in your mind you think it's gonna be three. You just tell them that, you just give them that expectation so they're not looking at you on day four like, you know, looking at that clock like, man, what's going on? You said it was gonna be X amount of days and you know, you're still here. You're just destroying my life right now. I need to, I, you know, and you're the one that said it, professional, that it was gonna take X amount of time. So that's on you. And once you set the expectation though, so if they know it's gonna take a week and then you finish in three days, you might look like the ultimate superstar. Understand how long the job takes, even if you have to keep records of it. You know, say painting a room. You know how often I done went into jobs, especially painting. Painting is just weird because it's like, sometimes it seems like it should just be faster than it is. You know, but you really have to understand like, you're going into a kitchen. Kitchen might be a small kitchen. But it, it, it could, I could do a sunroom, like a giant sunroom. It takes the same amount of time that some little kitchen because I got to paint around every cabinet. I have to paint around all the countertops. I got to paint around this. I got to paint around that. They got windows. They got just all kind of obstructions, just things in the way. So, you know, sometimes the only way to do it is that you got to sit down and say, okay, I'm doing this job and just keep a, a, a journal almost like, okay, this, Doing this, this, and this took me a day. This, this, and this took me three days. And start to get an understanding of how long these jobs take. So you're not running into a situation where, well, I got two jobs scheduled for this week. And now the first one I'm not done yet. And, I, and I'm not able to get to the second one. So now with the money I was supposed to make this week, well, now I'm not making that anymore because I wasn't able to finish the first job. And I got, so instead of having two checks for the week, now I'm gonna get one check that's gonna be half of the money that I thought I was gonna have. And then, and then next week, the job that I had scheduled for next week, I gotta push that back, because now I still got this customer over here and it just snowballs. You don't need those problems. And in general, time, time can be a little tricky of a thing because time has to include other things. You know, if, um, if I'm doing a job for somebody, right? But they want me to do all the legwork as far as maybe ordering materials and getting all that set up. Well, that's that's a lot of, you know, depending on the job, that's a lot of time that I have to be, you know, paid for. You know what I mean? If I'm if I'm doing a deck for somebody or something like that, and I have to go and I have to find all the materials and I have to price everything out and I gotta go get this and go get that, that's not free. <laughs> that's time that needs to be accounted for. Your time running around, your time on the job. All that time needs to be accounted for. It's not just how long does it take me to do the job. So be thorough, be thorough and understand how much time you need to do these jobs. Let me give you an example on just a small job, that dishwasher installation, right? If I'm going to estimate a dishwasher, 
Seems simple enough. I done put in, I don't know, probably hundreds of dishwashers at this point. <laughs> there was a time period, man. I was just doing this, like I was doing dishwashers like crazy. You know, Home Depot, man, I was, you know, I was doing my thing. It was it was probably a, a December to like April period where I was just doing so many dishwashers. I developed a whole system, a dishwasher kit and everything. Just, but the first thing I would do, somebody calls me, I don't have to go to your house, right? But there are questions to be thorough with this estimate. There are questions you need to ask. So I'd ask first thing, is the dishwasher located next to the sink, right? That to me, that's the first question I ask because you don't want to show up at somebody's house and this dishwasher, I've had it plenty of times where the sink is right here. The dishwasher is that way around the corner all the way at the end of all the cabinets. Whose design that was, I don't know. So now I got to figure out how to get this water line and this drain line through behind all these drawers between this behind this cabinet or you know un, they even went they didn't tunneled it underneath so uh, underneath the cabinets, so I have to figure out how to get this line then around the corner, and guess what? I gotta go around the corner, but they don't have a lazy Susan or nothing. So how am I gonna get this, this, all these water lines and everything, how am I gonna get it through? That's something that you have to know because that's a that should be a different price. I mean, maybe you charge the same thing, but that should be a different price. So first thing I ask is dishwasher next to the sink. If it's not, then I ask them if they can take me and take a picture of it of the, the just the kitchen cabinet set up so I can see where the dishwasher is located with respect to the sink. If it's in the island or something like that, then I gotta ask them, well, do you have a crawl space? Do you have a basement? Makes a huge difference to me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but there are times that changing a dishwasher, you might have to go in a crawl space for that. Happens, happens. It all depends on where things are located. Next, I might ask them, what brand is it? because I don't know if you've ever done dishwashers, you know, a Bosch dishwasher has that little uh, module for, for, the elect for the electric, but sometimes there's no room for it. There's no room for it inside the cabinets. You gotta put it underneath the sink, drill an extra hole, fish the wires through or put it and put it underneath the sink or whatever, and, and mount it on the wall or something like that. That's different than a standard install. So you ask that, you know, do you have the water line supplied? Like these are all questions I ask to for a dishwasher because <laughs> I want to hone in and I want to know exactly what I'm doing. So when I give them a price, I'm not showing up and oh man, I didn't get the hose for the, the, the extension all the way across the room. I didn't have that. I had one dishwasher I got to. Now there's no way of knowing this. It was hard plumbed. Never seen it before in my life. I looked under that thing, no water line under the sink. I'm like, huh. Look under the dishwasher. The water, it's, it's literally a, a copper line going directly to the dishwasher, going straight through the floor to, to the plumbing. Like no water line. So there was no way to get this thing off. So, and you know what the problem with that is, of course, well, that is in the right spot for that dishwasher. That water line, they plumb that right for that dishwasher. You put a new dishwasher in, the, the line is all the way back here, all, all the way to the back of the dishwasher. You can't, you can't even use that anymore. So a job like that ended up with me having to go in and redo the plumbing. You had to go in the crawl space and redo the plumbing. You know, so, but uh, like I said, that's neither here nor there because it's not that you wouldn't. There's no way I could have known that before I got to the house. Um, but yes, you have to be thorough. All right, that's the biggest thing. You got, you got to know, I know how long a dishwasher is going to, I know how, you know, you got to know how long it's going to take, all the things involved, uh, removal of the old stuff. You know, am I taking the, am I taking the dishwasher with me? Yes or no? You know, that matters. You know, disposal matters. Every little detail matters. And once you get all that down, you can go in and just, you can provide prices that you know that are solid. And, you know, you won't have to worry about erasing your profits before you even get them, all right? So, Daryl, also known as the finisher, stay safe, be blessed, and remember, if the trades don't work, nothing else does.